watercolour success starts with planning your painting and it's really important. In this video I'll talk about all of the things I do before I start a painting and while I do that you can watch me paint this black cockatoo. You've heard the saying if you fail to plan you're planning to fail. Well it's true particularly when you paint in watercolour. Many times people have told me that I make painting in watercolour look easy. It's not easy. What they don't realise is how much work has gone on before I put brush to paper. So let's dive in and talk about all of those things. The first and most obvious thing I have to do is choose my subject. When I paint, I have to find something that inspires me. I talked about this in my guinea fowl video. If you are inspired by your subject, then that will provide you with the creative energy that you need to produce an engaging painting. One of the reasons I stopped taking commissions for pet portraits was because clients would send me blurry, uninspiring photos of their dogs and I had no hope of creating a decent painting from the images that they sent me. In fact, they were so uninspiring that the joy of painting was lost on me. When you paint something that inspires you, you're more likely to enjoy the process of creating the painting. You're also more likely to establish your own unique style if you paint subjects that you're attracted to. Your emotional connection to the subject can make your painting more impactful. With this painting, I was inspired by a photograph taken by David Claude on Unsplash. I loved the pose of the cockatoo and I loved the feather detail but what really caught my attention was that beautiful eye and the contrasting beak and that's what I hope to draw attention to in this painting. Once I've decided on my subject the second stage of my planning process is to decide on a composition. Thumbnail sketches help with this and so do studies. With the cockatoo reference photo I was happy with the composition and all I did was crop it a little. With any composition I have to decide where my focal point is. I ask myself what area of the painting do I want to draw attention to and that's the area where I will place the most contrast. And I can add contrast with colour, value, textures and shapes. I will also place hard edges in that focal area, more so than in other areas of the painting. I also have to make a decision about what I want to include and what I want to leave out. Too much detail not only makes it difficult to paint, but it also makes for a painting that can be difficult to look at. If I paint in everything that I see, there will be no areas for the viewer's eye to rest and it all becomes a little too overwhelming. With this painting, as I said, I was drawn to the beak. So I wanted the beak to take centre stage. I placed it towards the centre of the painting and I kept it pale against the feathers so that it would stand out. Once I've worked out the composition, I have to sketch out my drawing and transfer it onto the watercolour paper. When I do the drawing, I have to decide what I need and what I don't need. And that is something that a lot of beginner painters struggle with. I know that I struggled with that for many years. Okay, number three. I've got my subject, I've nutted out my composition, now I have to decide on the colours I'm going to use. And in doing that, I also have to consider the mood that I want to convey. Cockatoos are playful, curious and mischievous birds, so I wanted my painting to be fun and happy. This bird has black feathers, so I had to work out how I was going to suggest a sense of playfulness using mainly black. I know that pre-mixed black can be quite flat looking because you can't adjust the temperature of it. 
So I needed to decide what colours I was going to use to mix my black and what other colours I needed to create that sense of playfulness that cockatoos have. Once I've decided on my colours, I'll often do a colour study before I do the main painting and I'll talk a bit about that later. Then I can see whether or not the colours I've chosen are going to look okay together. Over the past few years, I've been trying to limit the palette I use for each painting as much as I can, so that my paintings are more harmonious. So I spend a bit of time before each painting working all of that out. And we're not all the same. Every artist has their own method of choosing colours, and it depends on the artist's individual style and the intention for their painting. Okay, so I've decided on my subject. I've worked out my composition and I've chosen my colours. The fourth part of my planning exercise has to do with the painting process. I have to decide how I'm going to paint my subjects. And in doing so, I have to plan my washes. I look for the lightest areas. I ask myself, how light do they have to be? Do I need to reserve some white areas where I don't put any paint? Am I going to paint a background? If I am, I know now that it's best to paint that in first. Where will my darkest areas be? I also have to think about paint edges. What edges need to be soft or broken and what edges can be hard? The answer to those questions will determine the order in which I paint and how I will divide my painting into sections. Where will I wet the paper? Where will I stop the water? There are so many different things to think about. These are all questions that I have to answer before I start painting. A lot of those answers come from the experience of painting. All of the years I have spent painting and making mistakes along the way have led me to this point where I can make these choices fairly quickly and with confidence. I don't always get it right though. Painting in watercolour is a lifelong journey. I am constantly learning and it's the learning that keeps me coming back for more all of the time. The fifth part of my planning process is to consider the supplies that I'm going to use. What paper will I paint on and what other supplies am I going to need? I usually paint on cold press paper, but there may be a reason I might need to paint on hot press or even rough paper instead. I work out the brushes I think I'll need. I'll look to see if there are any areas where I think I might need some masking fluid. I also need to have a think about the paints again and the colours that I've chosen. Do any of them granulate and is that likely to be an issue? Will I need to lift any paint off any areas of the painting? If I think I will need to lift some pigment, then I should probably stay away from colours that are staining. All of this thinking has to take place before I begin painting. And finally, the sixth part of my planning process is doing some studies. And this is where everything comes together. I have talked about the value of doing studies in other videos, so make sure you check them out. This is the final part of my planning process that allows me to try out all of the different choices I've made so far. After doing my studies, I may need to rethink some of those choices that I made. Sometimes I might do a graphite study of my subject. Not only does that help me develop my drawing skills, but it also helps me to understand the form and proportions of whatever it is I want to paint. The graphite study will allow me to see where the darkest areas and the lightest areas of my painting will be. I can also do some experimentation with a pencil. I can draw in a background and play around with that and I can decide where I want to leave lost edges on my painting. The graphite study can save me some time in the long run because I can refine my composition 
and it will save me from having to repaint the painting. After I do a graphite study, I often do colour studies, particularly if I'm not sure how I want the final painting to look. I can test out the colours that I've chosen on my colour study and see if they're going to work together or not. This helps me to create a more harmonious painting. I often leave out some of the colours that I've used on my colour study. I might decide that I don't need them after all and that helps me to limit my palette even further. Creating colour studies can help to evaluate the effects of light and shadow on my subject. If I experiment with different tonal values, I can determine the best way to convey the form and volume of my subject. Sometimes I do more than one colour study because the first study may not work. I might need to rethink some of my planning and have another go. Some artists who do studies do simple and much smaller studies than I do. My studies are only slightly smaller than my main painting. Maybe down the track, when I have more skill, I might be able to get away with doing quick, small colour studies. But no matter how skilled I become in the future, if I'm not sure of my subject or how I want my painting to look, I'm sure that I will always do colour studies. I did a colour study before I painted this cockatoo and it allowed me to get to know the subject and work out what I wanted to include and what I wanted to leave out. I didn't include some of the colours that I used on the study. I decided that I didn't need them on this main painting. So that's a lot of the things I do before I begin my paintings. By taking the time to plan your watercolour painting before starting to paint, you can create a more successful and satisfying painting. And after all of the planning I did, here is my finished painting. If you are interested in buying a print of this cockatoo painting, I have some available on my website. The link is in the description. So if you think professional artists make it look easy, always consider the planning and time they've spent developing their skills and techniques. And also know that they have made so many mistakes along the way. I have many failures, but I keep at it and I try to learn from my mistakes. Where once I went straight in and started a painting without really thinking about it, now I do a lot of this planning beforehand. And it's the planning that has really helped me to improve. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week. Would you like me to do that again? Have I hooked you? You've heard the saying, if you plan to fail, you're planning to fail. No, is that right? Okay. okay. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah, that's it. That's what I mean. That's the one I want. My hair's in my eyes. Do that one again, just in case. Hmm? Okay.